autoimmune hemolysis has two different subtypes the warm which was discussed in the previous video and the cold which is today's topic cold agglutinin disease igm autoantibodies and it's so cold cold immune hemolytic anemia red blood cell coated with igm autoantibody at the room temperature or below that they agglutinate if they bind the complement and fix it avidly it's an intravascular hemolysis if the antibody is monoclonal it's usually a chronic disease if it's polyclonal it's an acute disease causes again primary or idiopathic this is the cold agglutinin disease or it can be secondary to infections such as cmv ebv or mycoplasma this is a big deal infectious mononucleosis waldenstrom macroglobulinemia associated with lymphoma big time and drugs such as lenalidomide now let's turn our attention to the idiopathic or primary form known as cold agglutinin disease usually affects the elderly there is low grade b cell lymphoma in the patient cold agglutinin disease is a low grade intravascular hemolysis again remember it will fix the complement so it's an intravascular hemolysis the fingers will be cold painful and blue look at this guy we call this acrocyanosis so typical scenario elderly person going out of his house to shovel snow in the winter time suddenly he develops acrocyanosis as well as hemolysis and he will go to the hospital pathophysiology it's an intravascular hemolysis why avid complement fixation by the igm avid means to the final pathway c5 to c9 which is the mac this is the end this is the destination mac will disrupt the osmotic environment of the red blood cell and this is an intravascular hemolysis because it occurs inside the blood vessel before going to the spleen or other reticuloendothelial organs again intravascular hemolysis as we have discussed before in a previous video the causes of intravascular hemolysis are here and they included the complement or igm so please go back to my previous video on intravascular hemolysis to understand all of this diagnosis of cold agglutin disease clinically the acrocyanosis the old guy shoveling snow plus some investigations such as cbc hemoglobin will be low hematocrit will be low ldh high unconjugated bilirubin high haptoglobin low because it's consumed in the urine you will have hemoglobinuria and hemosiderinuria the gold standard again is the direct coombs test or the direct anti-globulin test this is high yield after you diagnose hemolytic anemia please look for other diseases in this case such as lymphoma or mycoplasma prevention is better than cure avoid cold exposure dear grandpa don't go outside to shovel snow let me take care of it be a good grandchild treatment warm blankets again keep the patient warm blood transfusion via blood warmer again keep the patient warm folic acid of course because it's a hemolysis rituximab and a combination called rituximab fludarabine do not use steroids in cold agglutinin disease we could use them in the warm subtype the answer is yes but in cold no steroids and no splenectomy okay why because cold agglutinin disease is primarily intravascular so removing the spleen will never help of course you should treat the underlying lymphoma which is most probably low grade b cell lymphoma and now please try to answer this case the answer will be in my facebook page or you can tell me what you think below in the comments 
and I will correct you if you're wrong. See you in the next video. Thank you.